Hey guys, this is Safari, and I know this is like long overdue, but I just got back from like, uh, I had to do a funeral and stuff that's been, um, hectic around, so, I'm sorry. But I'm here with Rain, episode 19 of the first season, titled Toy Soldiers. Um, <clears throat> tonight will also be, a see, episode 21 of Rain, followed by... The 20th episode will end on May 15th, 22nd episode, and that will be end of end for rain for season one. So in Toy Soldiers, <clears throat> um, we get um Mary and of course the quarter friends get news that Mary De Guise, who is Mary um uh, Mary's mother, Maria Mary, she really doesn't think of another name. I don't realize the names are like similar. Maria, Mary, Mary Marie. Isn't like Marie the Spanish like the Spanish word for Mary? I think. I think I'm not sure, but yeah. So they get word that hey, mommy is under siege by Scottish Protestants because right now Mary's not in her country, so they don't have their queen. They just have like their I guess you say she's like the regent. And so as we know, uh, since the time of Henry VIII, if I remember my history correctly and what I remember from the Tudors um see um, ep- um television show. Is that uh the um Europe Europe is in sort of a um religious struggle because all of Europe used to be Catholic you know everybody Catholic you know the Hail Mary's and all that that you know Catholic Church and then you know a lot of some start separate you know breaking off into their own branch and then we got now we got Protestants so I think you had Martin Luther preaching you know Protestant stuff so now the you know majority of certain countries are divided between Catholics and Protestants. And since Catholic was it's, you know Catholic Church is pretty much the majority, Protestants you know are fighting back for their religious freedom. So obviously the Protestants have become a majority in um, Scot- Scotland, and they want Mary to give his head. So Mary, as the Queen of Scotland, uh, and also her, uh, her daughter. Obviously, she don't want her mama to die, so she needs to, uh, you know, find a way to get her mama some help. So she asks for help from her one mongering uncle Christian, the Duke of Guise, because King Henry, Queen Catherine, and Francis, uh, <laughs> they pretty much apparently cannot help her at this time point, because, um, what happened was in England, going on in England is, okay, Mary the First, you know, the first kid by Henry VIII with his wife, Catherine of Aragon. Okay, you know, they had a girl and she named, she's named Mary. That was his first child, right? And so then when he got divorced from her and married uh, Anne Boleyn and had Elizabeth, Mary names her, her half-sister Elizabeth the uh, heir, you know, to the English throne. So what the whole thing with King Henry is he's mad because this, that was the whole reason he wanted this marriage between his son, the Dauphin of France, and the Queen Mary is for he could get England because she is by blood also in line for the English throne. But since Mary has already named Queen Elizabeth I, who's actually going to kill her in um, a, later, in a couple more years, about to head you <laughs> and become like a badass queen we all know she is. And Henry is pissed off at it. He's like, he wanted the English throne. He's all upset. I'm like, duh. And not only that, he does bring up the point that Mary is still not with child. I'm like, well, damn. Damn. Well, I, I just, I mean, I understand the TV show, but it's the reality of the fact that at the time frame, the importance of a woman getting pregnant immediately after, apparently immediately after she even got married, especially if she's royalty, was like, a, was like, was a serious situation. Like, if you didn't get pregnant, you pretty much couldn't, I guess you say, couldn't secure your position on that. You pretty much, she can't, yeah, right. She can't, um, you know, secure her position on her throne. Because cause now she is married to Francis, that makes her the queen of Scotland and France. When Once, you know, Catherine and Henry died. Francis will become the, and Francis' title also will include, you know, the king of France and Scotland. They together they they end up having a you know rule of country together. But since she is not with his heir, which they wanted to be a son, because it can't be a girl. We already know how they we already know how they feel about women already. So they have a girl. They can be like, oh no, you need a son. You need a son. You know. So 
she already has that pressure on her trying to her to get pregnant, which she can't help that. I mean, that requires, you know, well, obviously they didn't have the knowledge how, of, of how ovulation and stuff work. They just know if they stop bleeding, they got to be obviously they must be pregnant. So you can see what happens. So you can see even within the show, even though they obviously they edited a lot of, you know, historical facts, that they kept certain um, um, aspects of history you know, in terms of um, the gender situations of men and women and how especially when in terms of royalty how they are treated differently and um certain things are expected of them so when she contacts her uncle the duke of Guise, he has his own agenda which is why the queen catherine really kind of does like him because he has he already gained the reputation like he's going to get what he wants so what he wants is to be lord magistrate but he knows He's waiting his time. He wants to Francis. He wants to be Francis Lord Magistrate because word has already gone around. There's rumors, as we call it, that King Harry ain't you know right in the head, which he's not. You know what I'm saying? He's not. We all know this. But you know, Francis, Mary, and Catherine, they have to try to keep it under wraps. So you know, so France does not know that their their king and their king is weak. You know, all about appearance. All right. So. Well, her uncle does decide, you know, I'm going to help out my sister, you know, you know, help her out when Francis says, okay, when I become king, you'll be my lord magistrate, okay? He's like, yeah, all right. So, when Francis goes and tells, you know, what he about to do, daddy has already decided that he going to send some armies out to, uh, what's the name of this place? It's, um, a, a place that's already has been, um, Acquired by the English, but France, the France has to give their territory back, right? So Francis decides to take the army that was supposed to go and help Mary's mom. She decides to take it for herself. Now I'm going to take back this French territory for France. And the dad like, yes, that's my son. He's French. Like, Mary will have to understand. So you see Francis sort of being torn between his duties as a prince and the next king of France and his duties to his wife. So you can so you see his his sort of dilemma. He's torn between the two. It's like he wants to make his wife happy. Of course he wants to help his mother in law because, you know, that's his that's you know, his his wife's mother and you know she obviously you know they know they have their little arguments at the end of the day she still loves her. So he wants to help her out. But then he also has to help his country, which is thousands and thousands of people that 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 he also has to, you know, consider in terms of, you know, their safety, their food, you know, stuff like that. All that's also on his mind. So we see his dilemma. Um, back to Penelope, um, she decides to pretend she's pregnant. But Catherine, like, oh, really? And so then she tries to, you know, contact King, like, King, I'm, ahead, I'm, I'm with child. I'm with child. You know, I'm, I'm with child, right? So King Henry comes out, come out of the room, right? All wild, not flesh and everything. He's like, oh, really? Give us state some money. And then my uh, my other children could have some um, nice, uh, could have a new brother or sister to play with. She was like, Henry, is that all I get? Is that all I get? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, boo boo, he is a king. Do you know how many freaking probably bastard children he probably has in the world? I mean, we're only focusing on Bash and Sebastian of, um, you know, Bash. We're only focusing on that bastard child. But I'm pretty sure as a king, and we all seen his his exploits, we pretty sure he got some more girls and some more boys out in France somewhere, you know, just chilling like, yeah, my dad is King France, but, you know. I really don't see him or anything, you know. Woo. <laughs> Talk about baby daddy stories. Baby mama stories. Oh, boy. So, Catherine then locks Penelope into the towel until she pretty much, you know, confesses like, all right, I'm not pregnant. And so, Catherine... Um, Catherine, you know, gets, um, <clears throat> Penelope's offer where Penelope agrees to be sent to Italy to be trained as one of Catherine's spies. Because since she's already a, a, no longer a virgin, she has to worry about this girl losing her virginity. You don't have to worry about that. So, pretty much she's trying her to be a spy to gather the information using her family wild, pretty much. So I'm like, well, okay then. I'm like, 
what and then when I thought about it, I was like, well, I'm like, you're pretty, pretty much like processing these girls out, but then you think about it, like, at a time frame, being a, a woman's side is probably not a bad idea. Given the fact that since as a king, if that's if that's if who she needs information about or some sort of noble, the fact that majority of nobles were probably already committed various crimes of adultery, you know, constantly cheating on a wife, because that's pretty much what it is. You're, I mean, you're married, but you're sleeping with other women that's not your your wife, who you're not married to under the, you know, the eyes of the Lord, which all these men, obviously, you know, is married in the church. And also, we all know that uh, on one of the Ten Commandments is, thou should not commit adultery, and thou should not kill. But we already see how many times he rose and broke how many of these Ten Commandments. And by technically, if you are a Christian, technically, they all would be going to hell. <laughs> because I, I'm sorry, I don't care how many hell marriages you do. Constantly committed adultery and murder in the name of God. I don't think God is up on, in heaven talking about, well, I can forgive you if you slept with some girl, knocked her up the window and killed her because you couldn't keep it in your pants. You know, you know I doubt that God can actually sit there and forget that. Satan's probably like, oh, brother, brother. I got another see with you. Oh, I got to see with your name. I don't even wait for you. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, so we have their situation, Penelope. So now we pretty much have ended the whole Penelope situation unless she comes back in season two as a cousin. So we go over to Casseroy. Oh my God, Casseroy, Casseroy, Casseroy. I love him so much. He's like so freaking sweet. I'm like... If Greer does not want Kessler, I will freaking marry this man. Like, seriously. He he is just so freaking sweet. It's ridiculous. Like, I understand Greer is, as we know from Notre Dame early in the episode, he's, she's supposed to, met, she's meant to marry your boy. Because he has the mark on the back of his neck that said that's, uh, who she would end up marrying and be happy with. But Kessler loves her even though he, she doesn't love him the same way, but he still is willing to try to make her fall in love with him. Well, you know, by being who he is, which is a really nice guy. So he finally meets Greer's family, and he disapproves of the way Greer's father treats his daughter, because when we first see her dad, he comes off off the carriage, right? And he's like, I had to bring your sisters here because of the, the pretty much what he's saying, the mess you made, and stuff like that. I'm like, so obviously all he had was girls, so he's trying to hurry man them off, you know, because he was mad for the girls off, and the diary is what pays for the man, bride price is what paid, is what paid, was paid to the family for Brad, you know, for being a virgin, you know, virgin price. Pretty much, you're paying for a virgin. When you think about it, either way, you're paying for a virgin, whether you're paying a diary or you're paying a bride price. You're sort of paying for the woman's. You're paying for the right to have to have first go at a woman who has not ever had sex before. It's just kind of like wrong when you think about. Oh, you seriously? When you put in that aspect, it's kind of like really though. So it's kind of like your family is selling you off for money. <laughs> like, here, you can have my, you have sex with my daughter as long as you got the right price and you know, marry her and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, pop some babies out. <laughs> you know, you can still, you can go commit adultery as long as, you know, your wife does but her womanly duties. Have sex with you. Don't talk. Have babies. You know, that's, you know what a woman is supposed to do. <laughs> and so... Since Casseroy disapproves of the way Greer's father treats his daughter, Casseroy gives the marriage contract to Greer to decide, and he arranges for her to oversee her sister's dowries and future husbands to make sure that the men that they marry, you know, ain't some asshole, pretty much, you know, because, I mean, because in this time frame, when you got married, you got married. There was no such thing as divorce as we could do today, you know. If he hits you, you just got hit. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just got slapped upside the head, okay? This ain't no, this ain't gonna be like no Chris Brown Rihanna situation where she can file a, a report and you know he has to say a certain amount of people. Wait, no, no, no. In this time frame, if a woman got beat up by a man, you just got beat up and you just had to deal with it up high. That's all. And a man never got in trouble for it. That's that's pretty much what it is. So I'm glad that Castaway is giving Greer control over. Her marriage contract, because whatever's in that marriage contract is not gonna be. A, you can't. It can't be a done. You know what I'm saying? It cannot be a done. So he's giving her the control. To, you know, to sign it when she's ready to, not when somebody else is telling her to. And she uh, giving her control over who her sisters marry is also a good thing. So her, so she knows that her sisters will 
you know, will marry into these into a safe relationship and hopefully actually love the man they're gonna marry and that he loves them as loves them as well. So I love that. I love that about that that whole scene right there. I thought that was beautiful. Um, Grill's grateful, obviously, and she's and the pair share a kiss. I'm like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> And um, Bash still has feelings for Mary. <laughs> so, because he has not yet consummated his marriage with Kenna, he's sort of been doing like a foreplay thing with her, you know, giving her pleasure, letting her, you know, w- when they have sex, I'm guessing obviously the way he's stating is that usually when sex occurs, it's usually for the man's benefit. It's not really for the female's benefit. Because as both, you know, male and female, we both have sexual desires. So he's showing her you know, let me, you know, pleasure you, let you get, you know, something out of it, let me, let you feel pleasure, but then he catches one night, and he, he walks about the room, and he catches Mary and Francis kissing, so he goes back to the room, and finally consummates with Kenna, because he's sort of trying to hide his feelings, because he's going to have to, but they're obviously not going to go away, no time soon, so this is going to ruin the whole love triangle, so he cons- finally consummates his marriage with Kenna, I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. France leaves with Christian and his army to invade Cal- Calais. That's it! That's it! Calais! 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 Yes, I got it! Calais! Oh, yeah! Okay. So he decides to leave France. Leave, France decides to leave France. <laughs> Francis decides to leave with Christian and his army to invade Calais. Mary's like, I understand that Francis has to do what he has to do for his country, but she's like, I also gotta do what I gotta do for my country, because at the end of the day, you're still a prince. You have yet to, you have yet to re- preach that king status. I'm a queen. I'm already done. I got I got a whole country that I'm not even in right now that needs my help. Bam. That's it like that. So that's it for Toy Soldiers. I'm sorry if I got a little bit off track and stuff, but you know, some you know, a lot of the show when you do review them, you know, certain things like kind of pop into your head that remind you of a situation, you know, you want to talk about a situation and bring it like some you know facts and stuff that you do gotta talk about. So that's all again for Toy Soldiers review. Comment, rate, subscribe. If you wanna um you know see well, well not really see because you really can't see my face until I start doing vlogs. But you yeah. <laughs> comment, rate, subscribe, comment on your favorite scene, your favorite character. Rate it if you like this video, rate it if you don't like this video, you know. You know, you know, I'm not it's not even gonna be hurt, you know. I want all these opinions. And subscribe if you want to see again. If you want to hear technically more video, more reviews, and eventually see vlogs and anime reviews and movie reviews. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.